Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. On this week's video, I wanted to discuss a topic that's quite sensitive. I feel like this is one of the most important relationships in your life, is the one that really truly shapes who you are. And it's a very sensitive one because we care about the person so much, so we usually don't really want to offend them, disappoint them, hurt them. So therefore, most times we're not even aware of all the signs that this particular relationship might be toxic to us. And I'm talking about a difficult mother-daughter relationship. Um, I've had a, many of you message me about toxic parents or dealing with narcissistic parents. And I found that even though that topic covered narcissism quite in depth when it come, take, came to narcissistic parents, it didn't really go into much detail because I find that most girls who have messaged me who are of similar backgrounds to me so of asian backgrounds and ethnic minorities these people um, find it quite difficult to navigate relationships with their mothers who are a little bit toxic or have certain unhealthy traits that's really affecting their daughter's mental well-being so if you haven't been to my page before please subscribe to my channel and please comment on this video. I would love to get to know you guys, introduce yourselves. And if you're a returning follower, then thank you so much for keeping up to date with my content. Um, this week's topic is a little sensitive one and I, heard, I know that my mom watches my videos and I just wanted to kind of start from my experience because my mom and I have a very good relationship, thank God, I'm very, happy and blessed with that but it hasn't always been very rosy and it hasn't always been very easy um, especially in my teen years um, we hadn't been in the UK for that long so my mom and my parents were finding it difficult enough to adjust to a whole new life and community and society and standards um, and also to have a teenage daughter who started modeling so there were certain times that my mom and I didn't see eye to eye or I felt like she's out to get me, she's the worst person ever and I'm sure she thought the same thing of me and all the comparisons with my other people from our community, other Afghans who had daughters my age and decided to get married young, they were amazing, I was a failure, all those things I've dealt with but especially looking into this topic more to do this video for you guys I truly understand that my mom by no means has any toxic or any difficult parent traits. Everything she's done, I completely understand and I know that she's done it for my own good and therefore I don't hold it against her. But it took me years to get to this mindset and to think to do the way I do and to develop this relationship with my mom where we're not just parent and child but we're also friends and I trust her and I rely on her and she feels the same with me and we advise each other. So it took us some work, some self-reflection on both of our behalves. It's, this isn't just me suddenly growing up and realizing things. My mom also has come a very long way in her thinking in the way she looks at things. And so therefore, this is why we are where we are. But it took us time and effort and work, both of us, to get here. So I understand and I have experience certain traits of the things that I will talk about with you guys that may present themselves as just like it's just how it is but really these are difficult or toxic traits that you need to watch out for and really how it affects you in your adult life now and to start with I'm gonna kind of we're gonna break down different types of relationships first so that you could see what you actually resonate with if any and the first one would be the mother-daughter relationship which is like bosom buddies so this is more where the mother is the friend and they know each other's secrets, they're very involved in each other's lives, more so the mother is very involved in their child's life as a cool mom and as someone that's just there, wants to know the goss, wants to be in on the action. Where the mother is so concerned about being their daughter's BFF, although they're there for them emotionally, um, what happens is when the daughter grows up, and wants to do their own thing and have their own friends and not necessarily always invite their mom then the mom becomes quite resentful and starts smothering the daughter and so the relationship becomes difficult and 
the mother feels left out and rejected and so they weren't allowed the daughter to kind of branch out and do their own thing and like i said although they're there for them emotionally where they're such a bff they fail to discipline their child as a parent so the parenting side of it goes out of the window and so the daughter as a grown woman would have difficulties to kind of navigate situations and um do things for themselves um, independently because they haven't been taught those things and they haven't been parented. So they will lack some crucial skills because they've just had a friend as a parent. The next type of difficult relationship is the boss and the subordinate kind of parent. This is where you're very scared of your mom and you want to please them at all times. You want to go out of your way to try and win them over because they have this very disciplinarian attitude. This type of mother is very much controlling. They want their child to do exactly what they expect them to do. Um, they want to be involved in every aspect of their daughter's lives and they're very rigid, very close-minded in their thinking. Um, they're very strict and they just have very high expectations and so they set that out. and. If anything is not up to scratch, then they're quick to point that out. This now creates the child to be very much scared of rejection, having very so low self-esteem because they're constantly needing to please them and be perfection, otherwise they wouldn't win approval. And so what happens when this kind of relationship, then the daughter grows up, they become very resentful towards their mothers and they usually rebel one way or another. So it may be a very wide, um, loud rebellion, so for the world to see, or it might be a quiet rebellion, but they will definitely have this real resentful feeling towards their parent. The next type of relationship is the rivals. And I've seen that myself amongst our community and a few people that I knew where the mother is secretly competing with their daughter. So when the daughter grows up and is pretty or successful or just more favored, then the mother starts feeling insecure and threatened. They're constantly comparing themselves in the way they look, how successful they are, how much money they earn, and things like that. And this then makes the daughter feel unworthy, um, really conflicted emotionally because they don't and there is no real relationship there it's a constant competition and it's obviously not healthy for neither one the next type of difficult relationship with a mother is the role reversal and i've also seen that myself personally too um, amongst peers and so on where the child or the daughter starts taking the role of the adult and parenting the parent because the parent is just not ready, not responsible, or just doesn't want to do it. In this type of relationship, it's usually a one-sided relationship where the daughter starts catering to the mother's emotional needs and support and the mother, mother continuously relies on their daughter to be there and meet their needs. And it's never really about the daughter's needs. So in this kind of relationship, usually the daughter grows up to have, again, very low self-esteem, finding it very difficult to say no, because at a young age, they've been taught to prioritize other people's needs over their own. And so they have difficulties forming healthy boundaries. Um, all of these difficult relationships kind of have similar outcomes, but certain ones bring out certain traits. The next kind of difficult relationship is the ghost. And that's where the mother's just not present, be it emotionally or uh, physically, um, they're just not around. They don't want to be, they don't want to be present in their daughter's life. And so it's, that's why it's called the ghost. If it's emotional unavailability to the daughter, then usually the child feels very neglected and unworthy because that affection they might withdraw love and affection from their child and give it to their other child and so the daughter's present in seeing their mom give love to one sibling and not to her, to her so that 
makes them grow up feeling very empty and unworthy and same if the mother isn't physically present so if they abandon their child and let their other biological parent or a guardian look after them then the daughter grows up without any explanations or answers and therefore they will just be feeling very empty and unworthy in their adult lives the next kind of difficult mother relationship is good mom bad mom in this instance the relationship is very erratic because the daughter doesn't know whether they're going to get good mom or bad mom one minute they're hot the next minute they're cold and so it's an emotional roller coaster at all times because the daughter does never knows what sort of reaction they're going to get back from their mother usually in these kind of relationships when they're out in public and in front of other people the mother acts very kind and very nice and very loving and then when they're in private then the mother turns and gets very strict, very like verbally abusive, which is mean, um, gaslight. So it's very up and down. And in this instance, the child, the daughter grows up to be quite fearful because they just don't know what to expect next. Now, all of these are very unhealthy relationships. And if you resonate with any of them, then it's something that you need to look into and be aware of and see exactly where you could change things and improve them so that you don't hold this resent in your adult life. So I understand that it's very difficult for us to discuss difficult family dynamics openly. This is why I wanted to create a safe place on this channel for me to come and discuss these topics with you guys and so openly destigmatize them and also find ways to help and get out of that mindset because it's no good us keeping our masks quiet just so people don't talk bad about us or say anything if we're not getting on with one of the most important people in our lives. So this is why I wanted you guys to come here and be able to discuss these and write them in the comments below. Um, but now let's look at how to really overcome these if you are in any of these relationships with your mom. And there's a couple of things that you need to do uh, because at the end of the day, you can't choose your family and especially culturally, our families are very, very prominent in our life making decisions and they're always present. And so we have to find ways of managing those relationships. So my first word of advice to you guys would be to just take a step back and look at the context of why your mother does or says certain things that they do. Understand their upbringing, understand their environment, understand their relationships with their parents, the abuse or toxicity that they faced, and all of those things, which is what I naturally kind of fell into doing when it came to my mom. As I started growing up, I understood a lot of the times why she would say or do the things that she would do. And it wasn't because she was out there to harm me or make my life difficult. It was genuinely because she was coming from a place of love, but that was her way of understanding that situation. And it was her way of protecting me from a very bad situation or very bad thing in her head. So she never was out there to hurt me. Whatever she was doing was for my own good, but her understanding of a topic was very different to mine. When you understand their ba battles, their childhood, their upbringing, and what they had to deal with, moving over to this country, balancing husband, kids, a number of things. When I do that with my own mom, I really begin to understand all her traumas and why she does or says the things she does. And that straight away helps me understand her better, know that it doesn't come from a place of hurt, and so I developed to manage my expectations differently. You can't expect someone to do things when they don't know how to, or they haven't been wired to do so. So how could you possibly expect them to know these things? And so when you manage your expectations of them and understand, okay, this person has experienced life like this, and therefore the most, their best is here, or what they can do, or what they understand is like this, because of their upbringing. So I need to understand that when my mother tells me certain things, it's because she experienced this with her mother, with her sibling, with her aunt, whatever. And so that's reflected onto me. It doesn't mean that I have, I'm have. i going through that right now, it's the right way. So when you manage your expectations and you understand the concept of why your parent does certain things, 
that forgiveness naturally comes to you. Because once you have a better understanding and you know, then you know that it's nothing, it's something that you have to learn to forgive. Because when you don't learn to forgive, you're allowing your perpetrators or abusers news to still be around your neck. And forgiveness is a huge emotional toll being lifted from you. So you forgiving your mother isn't for them, it's more for you because you know better, you understand better, you see it and it's nothing personal. So today me and my mom's relationship is incredible. So much love, so much respect, so much understanding. And like I said, she only had certain traits of certain things, but even then I held a grudge or certain resent and it, um, until I was grown enough to understand better. And I went through this process kind of unknowingly. I went through things myself in life where made me have a better understanding for my parents, which then made me really adjust my expectations and understand them better. And that in return naturally made me forgive everything that they've ever done or haven't done because I get it. So when you see it that way, you will also, by managing your expectations, you will also not put yourself in harm's way so much because you know what they're like. This is just how they are. And so you expect it. You know it's coming. You're going to balance it and remove yourself where you can. But it's one of the most important relationships in our lives and it's important for us to be able to develop that forgiveness, even if it, you couldn't do it then. By no means forget it. But forgive it. And by not forgetting it, you will not make those mistakes when it comes to you having a daughter. So it's important for us to learn from that. And that's why each generation is a little bit more wiser, a little bit more adaptable, because we learn from our parents' mistakes. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I hope that this hasn't been too overwhelming with too much information and knowledge about like a very sensitive topic. I'm, like I said, only here to create a safe space for us to be able to talk about things that genuinely affect all of us and yet is so stigmatized for us to speak about them in our communities. And it shouldn't be because it's a, this is the kind of relationship that really shapes and forms you into a you know, young woman from a little girl. So it's important for us to have healthy ones with our mothers and it's important for us to work on them if they're not healthy. Please do subscribe to my channel. Please follow me on here, comment and like on this video and keep up to date with all my content. I will see you guys again here next week. Thank you for watching. Mwah.